Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And today I've just got quite a few planty things that I need to do. I've got some plants that I want to get into pond, so I'm gonna walk you through the process of that. I'm going to be doing some repotting, potentially some propagating, depending on how far I get, and just kind of giving you a few little updates because there's a couple of things that I missed in my recent updates video. Also, I'm aware I've got paint on my arm. I can't get it off. So yes, and we can have a chat, we can have a catch up, and I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. <laughs> So one of the updates that I completely forgot to give you in my recent updates video was on my Pateras Albo Lineata fern. And this is the fern that I got, I think about three months ago now, and it looked beautiful for about a week. And then it just went crispy and horrible and all the fronds died off. I was so close to throwing it in the bin and some of you were saying, don't do that. Cover it with something, keep it nice and moist, keep it nice and humid, and it should grow back. And I have been guilty of throwing ferns away before when they've when they kind of looks like they're dead. But I'm very glad that I didn't because look at it now, it's properly growing back. And I haven't quite had the nerve to take it out of the little hummus tub yet, because that obviously is just creating loads of humidity in there. But I think I might kind of gradually start easing it out and into natural room humidity, just kind of like slowly acclimating it. Maybe just taking this off for a few hours a day and then putting it back on and just, extending that a little bit. I'm not quite sure, but it's doing well. I'm really happy that it's growing back. And as I say, I'm just so glad that I didn't just, I didn't just throw it away. And then this is, this is a really sad update. This is a Hoya that I just, so usually Hoyas for me are really quite easy. I find them really low maintenance plants. They don't tend to give me any grief. However, the Hoya Curtisii, this one has just been a nightmare since the day I got it. It arrived not looking great already. I chopped it back, I replanted it, I got it back to a fairly healthy looking state and then all of a sudden out of nowhere it just started to turn, it started to go yellow, all of its little leaves were falling off and I didn't know why. And so again I chopped it up, I did some in moss, I did some in perlite, I did some straight into soil and I did some in water. And actually the water in here is looking rather green and horrible. Um, but pretty much all of the sections have failed. And as you can see, it does have some healthy bits still on it, but it's starting to kind of brown and go a bit yucky towards the top again. So I'm just a little bit, I don't know, I'm just, I'm, I'm not giving up on this one either, but I'm just a bit baffled because Hoyas, as I say, do tend to be fairly straightforward. And this one is just a drama queen. So maybe I'll start with this one, in fact. I'm kind of thinking, let me just get a couple of strands of it out and see what the roots are looking like. Okay, so it's got some very small roots. I'm kind of thinking maybe I put this straight into pon. Editing Claire jumping in for a second because I know some of you have been asking what exactly pon is. So in a nutshell, Lechusa pon is a mineral plant substrate with the optimal air to water ratio for plants that can be used as an alternative to soil. Unlike soil, however, you create a deliberate water reservoir at the bottom of your pot, which is absorbed by the pon and keeps your plant hydrated. As it's a form of semi-hydroponic growing, hence the name pon, it tends to be much harder to overwater plants and can make your plant care much lower maintenance whilst keeping your plants happy. That's not something that I would usually do, but I feel like I've tried a lot of things with this plant and I've never tried pon. I know that you can propagate straight into soil, so I see no reason why I couldn't put it straight into pon. Um, I know it's a bit of a risk and maybe it's not the right thing to do, but I thought I would just try it because, as I say, I've kind of tried everything else. Uh, and I've been getting a lot braver with pon recently. I know I spoke about my variegated alocasia fry deck in my recent updates video and its new leaf is now out. This one has responded amazingly to pon and if you look at the bottom there it's actually starting to give me a new little growth point so I'm just like it's kind of restored all my faith in pon and the fact as well that this leaf is showing no sign at all of dying back. This leaf is doing really well and I can see that it has also now got another one on the way so yeah, I think, I think it's just time to experiment more. So that's what I'm gonna do with the Hoya Curtisii. 
And usually what I'll do with Pon is I'll, I'll kind of create a little reservoir at the bottom of the pot. So I will put a plant into a pot and then I will just have a little water reservoir at the bottom there. But what I'm thinking with this one is I might just use the jar that it's currently in and just because then I can obviously see the water reservoir and I can see when it starts to run low. And I did do this actually for my Maranta lemon lime fairly recently. Um, I just put it into a cup and I'm just filling, filling the water as and when I need to do so. And this plant's doing amazingly in pond. It's given me I think like three or four new leaves in the space of a month while it's been in pond. So it seems to be working well. I don't think plastic is really the best way to be doing things, but it's all I had at that point. So yeah, that's my that's my thoughts. So that is what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm just gonna start by taking all of these sections out and seeing if any of them are rotten or if any aren't gonna aren't gonna do well because yeah, like for example, you look at that bit. I don't think there's much hope for that bit. I could stick it in a prop box and see what happens, but I don't think it will do much. I'll put it to one side and I'll put it in a prop box, but I don't have particularly high hopes. Yeah, and some bits haven't even rooted at all. So I think it's probably gonna be the case of taking off quite a lot of the lower leaves and just kind of stripping it back to bare stem and then planting it into pawn. Might not work, but we'll see. Also as well, I know I said I had paint on my arm, but I am literally covered, like if you look at my fingernails, I'm covered in paint. It's acrylic and it gets kind of like right under your nails and it can be quite difficult to get off. I'm um, I'm going to Comic-Con this weekend, so me and Ross have been doing lots of kind of like prop making, costume making. We've got really ridiculously into it, but it does just mean that at the moment I'm just pretty much covered head to toe in paint and struggling to remove it. But hopefully it'll all be worth it because I think the costumes are going to be quite fun. So I will post a picture of that on my Instagram story on Saturday if anyone's interested because I love dressing up. Literally dressing up is one of my favourite things in the world to do. And I haven't done it in a really long time. So I am really looking forward to it. So I've just washed the jar out and I'm wondering if actually this jar is going to be a little bit big. For this I might even do what I've done for the Maranta and just use another plastic cup for the time being because I know I do have more plastic cups even if it's just temporary and I can just monitor it in that and just see if that's going to work I think that's probably what I'm going to do to be honest because I'm just looking at some of the sections of this like this little one for example and I'd have to plant that quite far down in the jar Unless I did a little terrarium type thing and put the lid back on this, assuming I still have the lid. Ooh, maybe I could do that. Okay, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> this is just me thinking out loud. I'm going to do the cup for now. But I, I mean, creating a little pond terrarium situation might not be the worst shout for the future. But yeah, for now, I'm going to grab a cup. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I feel like something this size is going to work better. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the pond um, and potentially just strip a little bit more foliage from the bottom. I think bits like that are fine. I think that will do fine. But some of them I might just need to remove a few more leaves. In fact, yeah, at the bottom, some of the leaves are quite squishy already. And it just makes it much more prone to rotting and I feel like anything that could go wrong with this plant is kind of going to go wrong so <laughs> I'm going to try and remain optimistic like that bit there I, I don't even know if it's worth putting that in because it just looks so dry and dehydrated I don't think again I'll try it in the prop box the one thing that I've really been struggling with quite a lot and I mean actually this is it's kind of made me rethink things a lot over the last few weeks because the temperature here in the UK is kind of it's doing very weird things at the moment it's it's like really warm one day that it's classic British weather chucking it down with rain the next but here in my flat whenever the sun hits it it gets so 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 hot which is obviously like amazing for winter months it's meant that I've very rarely had to have my heating on 
But getting to this time of year now, especially since the sun's moved round, as soon as it comes through the window, it gets baking hot. And considering that this isn't even like the midst of summer yet, I mean, I'm thinking about how it was in my mum's conservatory and obviously that was ridiculous heat. I remember it reached, I think, 45, 50 degrees one day, Celsius that is, which is, I mean, it's ridiculous. And plants were drying out like no tomorrow. And I have noticed it start to happen in here now. Um, I've got some plants that I watered, so I'm looking at my Monstera Peru over there, that I watered about four days ago, and already I can see its leaves starting to curl, and it must, especially with my hanging plants, because they're up high and obviously heat rises, I think it's just a little bit too much for them already. So as much as I don't want to do it, I think I might have to invest in some kind of air conditioning system for the summer months. <laughs> just because the struggles that I had at my mum's house. I mean, I was sloshing buckets of water on the floor at times and I was running fans and I'm just thinking, why not try and make my life a little bit easier, keep my plants happy and not have as much stress as I had last year. So if anybody knows of any decent air conditioning systems, then do let me know. It's something I know nothing about. But yeah, I mean, my plant care, my, my collection's obviously grown as well since I was at my mum's house and my plant care in general takes a very long time. I mean, I tend to do, I tend to do an hour or two a day if I can, um, but if I was to do one kind of stint going through and doing everything, I'm pretty sure it would take me at least five or six hours to do the watering, I would say. Is that an exaggeration? I don't think it is, because once I've got up high and got all the hanging plants down, it takes a long time. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling like aircon might be the way forward, because even at the moment I'm looking at, like, again, I've got a pothos plant up there that has always been fine, it's always been very happy. Again, it was watered, I think, at the same time as the Monstera Peru, like four or five days ago, and I can see it's got yellowing leaves, and again, it's gone all curly, and it's, I mean, it's so hot. My cabinet in my bedroom the other day reached 35 degrees, and my bedroom's not even in direct sun. It's just because this building is completely timber framed, I think, and because I'm on the top floor, as soon as, as soon as it heats up, it just gets sweltering in here. And I can open the doors, like I've got French doors in my living room and my bedroom, but I can obviously only do that when I'm about to monitor Yoli so that she doesn't go out and <laughs> launch herself off the balcony. Because um, apart from that, these are the only windows I've got, so it's not that practical to kind of have everything open. Um, but yeah, right, okay. I think we're pretty much there with this plant. So what I will do now, that's what it's looking like. I'm just gonna fill a little water reservoir to about there. And obviously I'll be able to see because the cup's transparent and I will just keep that filled and hope that maybe that does the job. I'll keep you updated with it and I'll let you know. Also, if anybody's just got any general tips for Hoya Cotissii, please do let me know because it is, it's just such a drama plant and it's one that I just cannot figure out. Um, so yeah, I would really appreciate any advice on that. But cool, I'll put that to one side, maybe even pop it into my cabinet for a little bit, give it some high humidity and see if that helps. But yeah, fingers crossed. Um, and then, so I, t I showed you my variegated alocasia fry deck and obviously that one's getting on very well. Alocasia, from what I've always heard, get on very well in pond and I've just been sceptical because I'm always sceptical about these things and because I've had bad luck with it in the past. Um, but my alocasia, what alocasia is this? This is just a green shield. I'm having a total mind blank. I'm pretty sure this is just an alocasia green shield. Um, this is the one that I kind of rehabbed a little bit. Oh, it's also dripping. Um, I rehabbed this one a little bit because I, it was doing really, really well. And I had some friends over one night and I had this plant in my kitchen, just actually there where my aponema is now. And in the morning, I don't know if something got accidentally spilt into its soil or something, but it was literally just flopped over and it looked half dead. And I've never seen a plant go downhill so quickly. So I chopped back its foliage at the time. I put it into perlite and just kind of tried to get a bigger, healthier root system going. And the roots in that are looking really good and well established. Um, and also look at all of those corms coming up in the soil. It's 
absolutely crazy in the soil, in the perlite. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it's obviously giving me so much growth. It's got a new leaf on the way there as well. And I kind of feel like this leaf might be on its way out. It's not looking fantastic and I have been staking it up, but I'm thinking I'm going to put this one in pond as well. So I should probably get something to empty the perlite into. Right, we have a perlite pot. Uh, and yeah, obviously, I, I know I've spoken about this before. Some people say if a plant's got a new leaf on the way, should you repot? And a lot of people say no. And I've personally never had any issues with that. I think if you're not messing with the root system too much, and obviously if the plant's in all the right conditions and it seems otherwise happy, I would say go ahead and do it. Um, this is just from my own personal experience. If you're in any doubt at all, maybe just wait for the leaf to unfurl and then repot. But yeah, I'm feeling fairly confident about this. I'm just gonna chop away the little stake for the time being. Its roots look great though, which I'm really happy about. I cannot believe how many corms it's giving me. This is insane. I don't think I've ever seen an alocasia put out so many at once. I'll show you up close in a minute once I've got the perlite off. Yeah, just look at all of those. And they go all the way around as well. That's absolutely crazy. Um, so usually when transferring to pond, if I was transferring from soil to pond, I would make sure to get as much of the soil off as possible. I'd probably give these roots a really good rinse just because obviously soil's organic matter. It makes things more prone to rotting if you're going to semi-hydro. But because I've just had this in perlite, which is obviously semi-hydroponics anyway, I'm not too worried about that. I think I should be able to just pop this as is straight into pond and it should be absolutely fine. Um, and I think the I think I'm gonna use this one because again that sits inside that one and I'll be able to just create a little water reservoir in there. So yeah, let's let's do it. And a lot of people say that you should rinse your pond if you're using it for the first time and you're not reusing it from something that you've used before and it's something that I haven't really done and I've heard that other people that are having success with pond don't do it either so I'm not bothering. Um, if you're in any doubt then it probably doesn't hurt to give it a rinse but it's not something that I can say that I regularly do. Perfect. So yeah, now what I'll probably do is just create a water reservoir in this pot and keep it filled to probably about there. Um, you can get meters to kind of measure the exact amounts. I'm, I'm personally not doing that. I haven't felt the need to do that because touch wood, nothing's gone wrong this time. But yeah, I'll just continuously check that, make sure that there is some water in there. And I'm wondering, should I just leave this leaf be? I'll leave it for now. I'll leave it for now. I think it's probably going to be a goner, but I'll leave it for now. I think that leaf is just so beautiful. This is definitely one of my favourite alocasias as well. I know it's not considered particularly rare anymore and like that never really bothers me anyway, but I just think it's very underrated. Like its foliage is so striking. It's got so many beautiful shades of green in it. It just looks really kind of psychedelic -y and cool. I just think it's amazing. I could I could happily fill my house with these. So, well, I mean, actually, by the state of the corms, it looks like I probably will be able to quite soon because I've got a lot of them there. But yeah, I'm just gonna pop a little bit of water in there and then it is done. And I'll also probably boil up this perlite to sterilize it and then just use it again. That's what I tend to do. So I'm just gonna put that to one side and grab my potting mat because what shall I do next? I think I've got a few things that I thought I'd like to do, but I think the next thing I'm going to do is pot up my Anthurium crystallinum that I got in my rare plant shop rescue box. I think I'm going to pot it with my other crystallinum. This one again is in pond. This is one that I transferred quite recently. It's doing really well. And I'm, I'm like, I'm pretty certain everybody seems to agree as well, but I'm pretty certain if you look at those leaves, that's a bad angle. You can see veination wise, I'm pretty sure. It actually looks a bit darker, but I'm kind of thinking that maybe that's just because its lighting conditions have been different, but I'm pretty certain it is a crystallinum and I think it'll look really gorgeous potted in with the rest of this one. 
This one's not, my main one isn't in the greatest state. I think it could definitely be doing better. Um, but it is putting out lots of new growth, which is good. It's got a new leaf just unfurling there. So yeah, I'm hoping again, as summer kicks in, it will start doing good things for me. It was part of the reason that I transferred it to Pon in the first place, to be honest. It just wasn't getting on that well in soil. And I was just kind of doing a process of elimination, trying to figure out what could be what could be going on with it and it definitely hasn't got any worse since i've had it in pon and as i say it is now putting out new growth which it hasn't done in a while um so i'm really happy about that and what i think i'll do i'll just reuse ooh, reuse the pon it's currently in yeah wow those are amazing roots and this little one here has fantastic roots as well. It's a little bit, oh, it's got some netting stuck to it. It's a little bit floppy at the moment, but I think it should perk up. Um, and I know I've only had this plant for a week and a half now, but I have given it a very thorough pest check. I did a pest treatment on it as well. I gave it a wash down with horticultural soap. I think it's fine. I know I'm again taking a bit of a risk here, but I'd like to get it into a substrate. And if I'm gonna, because it's got such a good root system, if I'm gonna pot it with this plant eventually anyway, I think so long as I'm sure to kind of very carefully monitor it, I think going in and doing it now should be fine. So yeah, right, let's find the position for these plants. I'm also really excited. I'm getting on, hang on, I said Comic-Con was this Saturday. I'm at next Saturday. This Saturday, I'm getting my very first planty tattoo. I've been wanting it for such a long time and I've wanted to try and design it myself because I've got kind of like an image in my mind of what I want, but I, I just haven't been able to quite create it. Um, and I found an artist that I absolutely love and I've managed to book in with her in London. and. I've got other tattoos, but there's like, I just feel like it's time for a planty one. I've wanted one, as I say, for a long time. Um, and I think she's gonna do an amazing job. So I might potentially vlog a little bit of that either here on YouTube or over on my Patreon. Um, I'm a bit nervous about it. The last, the last kind of bigger tattoo that I got, um, I've got a few, but the last bigger one I got was on, you can't really see it, on the back of my neck there. Uh, and I designed that one myself and it, I just was not happy with it at all. I, I, found the, I found the artist that I thought was the right artist. I chatted to them a lot back and forth before I got it. I wanted it really kind of fine and detailed and he drew it all out put it on let me have a look and I was like that looks great and then did it much bolder than I would have liked um I'll give you another another shot of it just in case you didn't see um but yeah it's really quite kind of like chunky and bold and I wanted something very delicate so I think it's kind of put me off getting anything not like not that's big but you know what I mean anything that's kind of like bigger than about that size for a while so I'm, I'm a bit nervous about it but I I do know that this woman's incredible so so yeah, I'm I'm wanting to go with like, uh, I've sent her some leaves that I love and I quite like something kind of photo, I'm just gonna go just there on my forearm. I'd like something quite photo realistic in the leaves with lots of kind of shades. I'm not having color, but just kind of lots of natural shading. Um, so you've got lots of leaf definition and then some kind of just like cool, <laughs> cool artsy kind of geometric stuff going on in the background. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know when it's done and I'll, again, I'll post, I'm sure, a picture on my Instagram story. But that's really exciting. I feel like I've got a few exciting weekends lined up, actually. What about you guys? Are you up to much at the moment? Have you got much going on? Are you doing anything exciting? Do let me know. Oh, in the comments below. <laughs> Fabulous. Right, okay, again, I filled the water reservoir to about there and I will just keep monitoring it. I think it looks really lovely. Yeah, it, it's definitely a crystallinum, isn't it? It just looks like part of the plant. Uh, but it's got another new little leaf coming up there on the new the new section as well, which I'm really excited about. So, so yeah, again, I'll keep you updated. 
I feel like I'm whizzing through these. Some days I set myself a few things to do and they take hours and hours and hours. And I'm like, oh my God, how is this taking so long? And other days I'll put out a load of stuff and think I will never get through all that. And then I end up just whizzing through it. So today is one of those days. Again, I'll sterilize the pond that I haven't needed and I will use it again on another plant. And another thing that I wanted to do, again, this is with one of the plants that I got in my rare plants, rare plant shop rescue box. Um, so again, you guys confirmed this is a Florida ghost. Obviously, the majority of it is very, very green. And usually I don't like potting two different types of plants together, but I have got the Florida green. It's very dehydrated at the moment, but I have got the Florida green. It's looking a little bit sparse. I'd like it to be a little bit fuller and it, it looks pretty much like the same type of plant. And I have also got a little cutting of it. It's been propagating through my bedroom cabinet as well. So I'm thinking if I can get that in there as well, then I'll, I'll give it a go. I don't think I'm gonna do pond for this one. I think I might just stick with soil. Uh, but yeah, and then hopefully get it climbing the pole and I'll put it in high light because apparently that's meant to be amazing for the Florida ghost to kind of keep the lovely ghostiness of it. I've never actually had a Florida ghost before, so I'm quite excited about this. Um, and some of you were saying that in one of Kaylee Ellen's videos, oh, in fact, I've just realised this moss pole is cable tied onto the pot. So I'm gonna have to cut it off. Uh, yeah, in one of Kaylee Ellen's videos, she chopped up her Florida ghost and some of the theories were that this is one of the bits that I got, um, which is quite exciting. Kaylee Ellen's pretty cool, so it was pretty cool to have one of her plants. But yeah, right. Out it comes. Oh yeah. Whoops, that soil is so, so, so dry. Literally, it's just falling away. Bone dry. And again, this one has been watered less than a week ago. It's just crazy. Also, the thing that I, I've, I've spoken about before in other videos, but the thing that I'm really struggling with in my flat here is humidity, because again, I don't know what it is, but this, this environment is just naturally so, so, so dry. Like if I have a day where I forget to fill up my humidifiers, the humidity can drop as low as like 25, 30%, which for me is like very, very scary territory. I like the humidity to be at least 60% or over. It doesn't have to be 60%. I think probably 50 would be okay, but I'm, I'm used to kind of having much higher humidity conditions naturally. Again, at my mum's, it was, it was very, very high. And down in my basement bedroom, we actually had to run a dehumidifier because it was so naturally humid down there. So yeah, this is, this is just a little bit of a struggle. I'm I'm doing lots of kind of DIY methods for it. I'm using pebble trays a lot at the moment. I'm doing lots of kind of like whenever I leave, whenever I boil vegetables, I'll just leave the pot there so that the water can just evaporate. Lots of air drying my clothes, all that sort of stuff, because obviously running humidifiers constantly can be quite expensive. Where have I just put? Oh, it's I'm losing my mind. But yeah, so again, obviously with the weather warming up, I feel like that's only gonna get more and more intense. <sighs> I feel like this one might be a little bit of a mission. So as you can see, it's rooted very well into the moss, which is great. It's got a really nice root system, but that does often mean that it's a little bit difficult to untangle, especially when it's not a thick, kind of full beefy root system. And this one for a, uh, I was gonna say for a philodendron is quite thin. I guess it's just, kind of standard but or maybe it's because it's a younger plant um it's not quite as thick and chunky as I would have thought actually but I've just finished an intensive four-day training session with Yoli and oh my goodness she has got on so well I know I spoke about it I think a few weeks ago and I was a little bit nervous about it I've worked with so many trainers in the time that I've had yours just because she can be a a little bit of a nightmare. She's incredibly prey driven, very reactive with other dogs. Even seeing another dog like 100 meters away, she'll be launching herself. She can be quite funny with some people, like people wearing hats, people with funny bags. Like she just, <laughs> she could just be a bit of a nightmare. Um, but this whole week was essentially about desensitizing her to, to certain things and 
just building building the connection between her and me when we're out in public so that she knows that I'm the person she comes to and that she doesn't always need to react. And like, she, I, I don't want to jinx it because obviously it is early days, but she's like a changed dog. I took her out for the most beautiful walk today. I've got a gorgeous kind of common that I can walk and it's got loads of woodland and I usually tend to avoid it at busy times because it's usually filled with other dogs. But we went there this morning and we were there for a couple of hours. I just, I didn't want to stop walking. It was such a beautiful day and she was having such a lovely time. But yeah, she was, she was going up to other dogs. She was very calm. Also, sorry, I'm not using my microphone. If you can hear traffic sounds, that is why. Um, but yeah, she's just really, really relaxed into it. And I feel like I've got so many more tools now as an owner to really kind of maintain that. It's just, it can be quite scary kind of going, like going out and doing it myself because she can be a real handful. Um, but I think now that the things have been put in place, just doing it every day and, keeping it up and consistency for her, consistency for me, long may it last, but yeah, she's doing so, so, so well. And for the first time in a really long time, I've actually just been able to not sit back and enjoy walking her, but I, like, I always enjoy walking her, but it can just be a bit stressful at times. Like usually if I see another person with a dog coming down the path towards me, I'll be like, right, off we go, other direction. And I'm not having to do that quite as much now. So. Yeah, early days, but I'm incredibly proud of her. I do love using moss for propagation, but my God, is it a pain to get off. I'm literally working away at this root ball and it's hard to tell what's root and what's moss because it's all just so intertwined. I know I've had questions before from some of you saying if, if you were to just pot this in soil with moss still on it now, would that be okay? Um, and I think uh, it's very, very risky personally, like obviously with moss, it does hold a lot of water and with something like a philodendron, it might be okay, but I wouldn't take the risk personally because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be feeling the soil and when the soil feels dry, you'll think, ah, oh, the plant's ready for water and you'll water it through, but you don't know how much moisture the moss is holding and it can just, it can cause root rot very, very quickly. And um, it's the same reason why a lot of people don't put moss all the way down to the bottom of their moss poles, because again, that just is extra moisture in the soil and it just makes things a lot harder to monitor. So although you don't need to get literally every single bit of moss off, I try to get as much as I possibly can, just because as I say root rot. Root rot is a nightmare to deal with and I definitely don't want to be doing it with this plant. I still haven't tackled the roots on my Begonia Thurstonii either. That's one that's been propagating in moss for, oh my God, I wanna say about six months. Its roots are like, I, I can't even see the moss anymore because its roots have just taken over and they're such fine spindly roots. I, ju I just don't know what to do about it because I really like the plant, but in fact, I'll show you, I'll show you it. <laughs> So this is the plant. It's doing really well. I think it's really beautiful. I love how it's kind of greeny and shimmery on the front and then it's quite red on the back. Perfect level of houseplant colour for me. Um, but if I lift it out, oh, it's a little bit drippy and wet. Look at all of that root. Literally, I only hydrated it this morning, that's why it's very drippy. Um, but yeah, it's literally all root and part of me thinks that it might just be easier to kind of chop hmm I don't know chop that bit off and then pull the moss out from there I'm not sure I'm undecided and so for the time being I'm just letting it stay in moss which in theory like you can grow plants in moss I could just leave it like that but eventually obviously the moss is going to get to a point where it is going to need to be changed out it'll start going a little bit sludgy <sighs> and then I won't know what to do. And by that time, it will probably be a lot worse. So if anybody's got any ideas, please do let me know. I mean, I think maybe if I sat down for like, I don't know, five hours, I could, I could probably give it a go. But I haven't had the time, well, I haven't made the time to do that. So yeah, for now, that's what it's looking like. Um, which actually makes this one seem like a walk in the park. I think we're getting there with this one. Okay, I've got the majority of the moss off the roots. 
and I think that's going to be absolutely fine to pot up. So I think I'll get them all potted and then I'll figure out how I'm going to secure them to the moss pole. Oh, it's going to be a lovely bushy plant after this. Just putting some soil and bark at the bottom of the moss pole and then try and slide it in neatly, which never quite happens. I also don't know why I cable tied the pole to this pot before. I feel like it's such a perfect fit. It should, in theory, just stand up quite well by itself. But yeah, I don't think I will need to do that again. And I am just reusing the soil that was in here before. This plant has only been potted up for a couple of months, so I don't think... I definitely won't be ready for a soil change yet. I think this stuff is still all good and full of nutrients. Cool, and I think the best way to probably encourage this plant to grip on and climb the moss pole um, without tying big bits of string around it is probably just to do what I've already done here for this section and use little like crocodile hair clips like that. If you just bend them out slightly, you can just stick them straight into the soil and like pin the vines in place until they start to attach. There we go. That looks so much fuller than it did before. I really hope it continues to give me these beautiful leaves because I think it's just so pretty. I, I don't think I've ever really had a desire to have the Florida ghost before, but now I'm actually seeing it in the flesh. I, I really, really love it. So yeah, fingers crossed I get more of that kind of growth. And then what I will do is what I, like literally what I always do for my moss piles, I'll just make a little hole in the top of the cup, pop the cup on top of the moss pole. And then I'll just be able to fill it up with water and just let it kind of drip down and slow, kind of like slow release hydration for the moss pole. Um, in fact, there was a cup somewhere that was doing that already for this pole. I don't know where that is, but again, I will find it. I will find it after the video. But yeah, cool, that is that one done. And the last thing that I wanted to do was, so my Alocasia Fry Deck, I've got, I've got quite a few Alocasia Fry Deck. I divided my big, big, big one when I was again living back at my mum's house. And again, some of you have asked about where all of the sections of that have gone. I gave quite a lot away to friends. A lot of people loved that plant. I've still got multiples in my collection. So I was like, I don't need loads of them. But this one was actually one of Emma's and she gave this one to me already in semi-hydro. This is just kind of like a POM equivalent. This is Soil Ninja's equivalent. Um, and this actually was the plant that encouraged me to get others into pond again and kind of re-experiment again. Because I, as I've already said, had a massive fear of pond because I had such a bad experience with it the first time I tried it. But this one was doing so well, it's actually doing better than my other one that's in soil. So what I'm thinking is taking my other one out of soil, putting it into pond with this one, and again, just getting a lovely fuller plant going. Um, Cause yeah, I'll go grab my other one, but it's, it's, doing, it's doing okay. Yeah, I think okay is the right way to describe it. It's looking a bit floppy. It's very dehydrated at the moment, so it does need a water. And it is starting to give me a new leaf there, which is encouraging because this bit down here, that little brown bit is where it actually flowered quite recently. Oh, pulled it straight out. Um, and as it started flowering, I think it just used up so many of the energy reserves within the plant. And I was kind of umming and ahhing about chopping the flower back. And I thought maybe I'd try pollination. I don't know why with alocasia pollination, it's something that I've just never so far had luck with and it did lose quite a few leaves. So these are its only two at the moment. And this one here, which is its oldest leaf, kind of looks like it might be getting ready to die back. It's going a little bit yellowy, as you can see. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of glad that the soil's quite dry on this one because it will hopefully hopefully, famous last words, make the transfer to pond a little bit smoother just because it's often easier to get the soil off. But oh my goodness, it's got, it's got amazing roots. Wow, those are gorgeous. I love alocasia roots when they're healthy. They're so plump. But yes, I'm just going to try and get as much of the soil off as I possibly can. Oh, and I've got a little corn there, which doesn't look particularly 
rooty but I will pop that into my box and again hopefully hopefully get it going. I've actually found a really good method. I mean, I know uh, Emma always talks about the shallow water methods where she just puts a little bit of water at the bottom and gets them going that way. Um, but I got quite a few alocasia corms at the recent plant swap. And I put them all, I kind of planted them all down, ex like the top exposed, planted them down to soil. And I put a little drainage tray underneath them and I've just been feeding them, like keeping the soil hydrated from the drainage tray, just putting a little bit of water into that as and when. I've covered it in cling film, it's in my prop cabinet in my bedroom. So technically I probably didn't need to do the cling film thing, but it just kind of, I don't know, keeps it even more humid. Um, and there, I, in fact, I'm getting so distracted, but I'll show you. Yeah, so this is how I've done it. And I'm just filling this little thing up as and when it needs it. And bearing in mind, literally a couple of weeks ago, there was absolutely nothing. That one's already got a really nice leaf. And I think actually all of them in there are starting to sprout. And I don't actually know what type of allocation. In fact, the one with the leaf has actually got a new leaf on the way as well. Um, it kind of looks like it might be Oh, it's got a very zebrinery stem. I don't know if you can tell in this light. But yeah, the stem's very stripy. I don't know what that is. Um, but yeah, I've just found that this has been a really effective method because there have been points where I've really struggled with alocasia corm sprouting. I was going to say propagation. Sprout, sprouting the corms, getting them to do something um, without them rotting. And this so far has worked brilliantly. So yeah, I'm going to keep them, keep them in my cabinet, keep them as is for the time being. And yeah, I'm really intrigued to see what they are because I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got seven of them in there and I don't know what they are. Um, so yeah, again, we'll keep you updated. But yeah, I think what I'll probably do is the exact same thing with this little corm and any others that I find. I'm going to stick to that method for the time being because it's worked really well for me. And I love alocasia so much. They're just such beautiful plants. And I feel like now I've got the hang of them, I, I do, like, I genuinely do find them ridiculously easy to grow. They're one that I struggled with for quite a while when I was, not when I first getting into houseplants, but when I started experimenting with plants that maybe weren't just kind of like snake plants and pothos plants and were a little bit more challenging. I found them so, so, so difficult. Um, but yeah, I feel like I'm finding finding new methods that are allowing them to be as happy as possible and pon is apparently one of them which is really great because it's so low maintenance um but yeah i'm happy with i think i'm happy with the soil that i've got off that there's also another corm at the bottom just there um is that a corm or is that a tuba oh actually i don't know i'm gonna leave it be anyway um, but yeah, I, I've got most of the soil off. It doesn't need to be all off, so long as you've got the majority off, that is fine. Um, and then I think I might wash out this pot and use this pot again. And then, yeah, transfer the other one over as well and then use a mix of the soil and then just any hydro and the pond that I've already got. Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna give this pot a good wash out. I've just noticed that this little pot still has a green sticker on it, which is from my colour coding system that I made for my mum when I went away on holiday. How long ago? Probably about a year ago now. Um, that was, oh my goodness, that was so stressful. That was also during, I think, probably the hottest day that we've had in the UK in years. Like it was, I think that's the point at which it reached 45 degrees Celsius. And my mum, bless her, was very, very stressed. Yeah, it's when I went away on my mystery road trip. I want to go back and watch that video, actually. I did make a video on it, if you haven't seen it. That was, oh my God, my friend is literally the best. It's also just been her birthday and I need to wrap her presents. That's what I need to do. Oh, sorry, my brain's doing all sorts today. Um, but yeah, she uh, she took me on a mystery road trip and I, well, mystery road trip, it turned into a, it turned into a holiday abroad, but I had absolutely no idea. Um, my, I got my mum to vlog little bits of her taking care of my plants as well. And it's probably one of the, uh, it's not totally planty obviously, but it's probably one of the, like one of my favourite videos that I've edited for my channel. I just had so much fun putting that together. Uh, and it's so nice as well sometimes to 
not just rely on on photos like actually having oh, i'm gonna pour a little bit of that out, actually um actually having a video as a memory is quite nice because you feel like you're kind of living it a little bit more so yeah i definitely want to scroll back a bit and watch that one again <laughs> oh wow this one's got really right that went everywhere really good roots i'm going to very carefully try and show you all but yeah i'm not going to break that up too much i'm just going to give it a little shuffle round in fact maybe get a little bit more of the fabric off it first i'm hoping they're not going to be too squished in here together i'm wondering if i should pot size up there's a lot of semi-hydro still still on those roots. Maybe I need to get a bit more off and then I can probably judge it. It's funny actually, if you look at the structure of the roots, like compare them, this one's obviously very beefy and chunky and this one's got a lot more really spindly roots and I'm not quite sure why that is to be honest because obviously leaf size wise they're fairly similar. But yeah it's interesting that I don't know if anybody knows if there's an answer to that. It could just be purely because they've been in different substrates. That could be the reason. I'd be interested to, ooh, not a secure place to keep the plant. Um, I'd be interested to see what happens with the roots once this one's potted in semi-hydro and see if it does the same. I'll check back in a, in a month or two and I'll let you know. So it's definitely teetering on the small size, this pot, but annoyingly, Again, as always, I'm really short on supplies and the only pot size up I've got from this is, I think about a pot size 15, which I think is just gonna be way too big. So this is probably a little bit of a temporary measure and I'll size up again at some point soon. Um, but for now, I think it's gonna do the job. Yeah, that makes it look so much fuller. I know, as I say, I know these bits aren't doing amazingly. It could be because they're just a little bit dehydrated. Um, but yeah, I kind of, I know I chopped up my big Alocasia Fry deck and I thought it was the best thing to do. And I think in hindsight, I kind of wish I'd just repotted it into a bigger pot because I do miss having a really big one. So this is the start of a second really big one. But yeah, again, I'm just gonna keep the water reservoir filled. I'm going to put it in a fairly bright spot. I'm going to keep it in the same spot, I think, as this section's been in, because this section seems really, really happy. It doesn't actually get ridiculous light where it is. It doesn't get any direct sun or anything like that, but kind of medium to bright indirect light, I would say. But yeah, that is, that's everything that I wanted to get through today. And I feel like I got through it much quicker than I thought I was going to, but I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope if you were doing planty stuff along with this video, then you've got a lot done. Uh, but yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video. Bye!